tech, the torch bearer for the tech industry. Uh, today, uh, the webinar is about grow di digital and go international. And we're very honored to have uh, Senior Minister Chi Hong Tat, Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry and Ministry of Education to join us. Uh, together with him, uh, Chairman uh, Peter Ong of uh, Enterprise Singapore. And also we have three distinguished uh, panelists of which I will introduce uh, later. Uh, what is very exciting for us is that this is the first event this year that we have a minister to come on board and, and address us and how timely it is uh, on the first week of the uh, 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 opening of the economy. Um, we have about uh, 1,000 uh, and uh, 140 people who sign up uh, out of about uh, close to 900 uh, companies. So this is certainly a big in endorsement of uh, how important this uh, subject is about. Now, uh, in the next one and a half hours, we will hear from the minister on why digitalization is so important to business continuity and sustainability. Next, we will get insights from our panel of distinguished speakers on how businesses can kickstart their digital transformation and capture new opportunities. Lastly, we will learn and hear how the grow digital solutions can help us set up our business and help us sell internationally. Now, without further ado, may I invite Minister Chi to give us his opening address. Thank you, Andy. And my apologies once again to all our participants uh, for the late start. Um, Mr. Peter Wong, Chairman of Enterprise Singapore, fellow pan panelists, ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to speak to you. When I visited my constituency over this uh, weekend, I noticed that uh, there's uh, optimism in the air as our businesses reopen. And I see many happy faces, shopkeepers, and also residents who are out enjoying a meal with their friends and family, catching up with friends and family, something that they have not been able to do for quite some time. But despite this positive feeling in the air, I think we should not draw the wrong conclusion that things are going to go back to what they used to be. The battle against COVID-19 is not over. The virus is still in our community and we remain in a COVID environment. There's still a need for us to take safety precautions to prevent a second wave of infection. The COVID-19 pandemic is something that has accelerated many changes in our economy and society. And to thrive in such an environment, businesses must be agile and to constantly adapt to new operational changes and requirements and also new consumer preferences. There are three important Ds when businesses embark on enterprise transformation. And these are digitalization, design, and determination. Now let me go through each one briefly. And I'll start with digitalization. Now, without knowing how long the pandemic will last, learning how to make good use of technology has become even more critical and urgent for many businesses. It's now no longer a luxury, but a necessity. Companies must, diverse, sorry, must diversify their revenue sources, strengthen their value proposition to customers, and figure out a way to operate safely while remaining commercially viable. Customers are looking for new business models, new ways of transacting with businesses. The adoption of digital solutions enhances the company's resilience and it also opens up new possibilities. For example, Scent by Six, a company that retails perfumes and home fragrances. Uh, it conducts B2B fragrance customization through its outlet at Bugis Junction. The company has set up a website and used social media, such as Facebook and Instagram, and he has gathered more than 12,000 online followers. So when COVID hit all of us, 
The company already has a head start compared to their competitors during circuit breaker and they were able to quickly switch their business models and start to sell online without compromising safety. If they had only started when COVID came along, they will have taken a couple more weeks, maybe even longer to get ready. But because they were already well prepared, they already had a social media presence, they were able to make the switch more quickly when circuit breaker uh, and when COVID and circuit breaker came. So with this additional source of revenue from that online sales, Send by Six is now able to have a head start and I think to win over more customers as the economy reopens. I believe many of us are familiar with this first D on digitalization because it's usually what we focus upon and what we think about uh, when we talk about technology adoption. However, my belief is that technology should not be implemented in isolation. It needs to be accompanied by good design and also a good understanding of the impact of technology on users and on society. When we place human needs at the center of technology and at the center of design, it pushes the boundaries of what technology can do and it also provides the impetus for continuous improvement. Many of us would think of companies like Apple and Dyson when we speak of the importance of design in technology. These companies have pioneered superior technology, but what makes their products unique and attractive to consumers is the integration of technology with innovative human-centric design. So the technology is important, but they don't just rely on technology alone, they combine it with human-centric innovative design. And this is what we hope to achieve through multidisciplinary programs offered in our institutes of higher learning, including the Singapore University of Technology and Design, SUT. And it adopts a whole university approach that is purpose-built for a seamless integration of engineering, technology, design, and the humanities. Another aspect of design that is relevant is the concept of design thinking. And this enables companies to focus on user experience, not only in the development of its products, but also in the development and improvement of its work processes and operating environments. And with COVID, I think design thinking skills will come in quite handy when companies look at how to uh, change the way they operate and also their work environments. Let me share with you a story of uh, one Singaporean company that has embraced design thinking to achieve a competitive advantage. Um, this is not the story of a young startup. It is actually the story of a 70-year-old rock sugar company called Cheng Yu Heng. Inspired by a business mission to San Francisco with Enterprise Singapore, Cheng Yu Heng's executives decided to pioneer the use of design thinking to develop a product for a new generation of consumers and to reinvent its traditional business processes for the modern age. The company not only conducted extensive market research and design ethnography to understand customer pain points, but it also worked with our universities, polytechnics, and ITE to develop a new methodology to crystallize rock sugar on a stick and then to infuse sugar with different colors and flavors. So the result of this painstaking three-year journey was the creation of a new product line called the Jewel Rock Sugar Sticks. And since the launch of this new product, Cheng Yu Heng has seen a three-digit growth in its rock sugar revenue and it has successfully renewed its brand image with a younger generation of consumers. This story of one of Singapore's oldest rock sugar company illustrates not only the importance of design, but also determination, which is the third D I want to talk about. So before the company decided to reinvent itself, it had been struggling with an increasingly competitive rock sugar market with plenty of cheaper alternatives coming from other countries, including Malaysia, Thailand, and China. Now, without innovation and product differentiation, traditional rock sugar is actually a commodity. And as we know, when you compete on a commodity, the competition will be based on price. And if you compete on this basis, the odds are not in our favor because Singapore companies tend to face higher cost structures than our rivals from the regional countries. So instead of giving up and keeping to the old ways, Cheng Yu Heng's leadership team 
rallied their stakeholders together, overcame initial resistance to reinvent the company, and it managed to emerge stronger with new product offerings. Now, I'm sure Cheng Yu Heng's journey involved many setbacks and failures along the way. It was, we only see the end result, and it looks so, so simple, right? But it was a three-year process, and along the way, they had suffered many setbacks and failures, but they never gave up. They had to persevere and have the determination to press on despite facing obstacles before they eventually found the winning formula. So this shows the importance of the third D, determination. So ladies and gentlemen, if we combine these three Ds, digitalization, design, and determination, we think that this will help our companies to embark on more successful enterprise transformation. But another very important ingredient is not to do it alone, but to do it in partnership with key allies to achieve stronger business outcomes. And this is what I would like to touch on next. I would like to talk about two types of partnerships today, partnerships with solution providers and also partnerships with our trade associations and chambers or TACs. Now we have seen many solutions providers emerge as key partners during this pandemic. For instance, social enterprise Forward Coffee Roasters has worked with a solutions provider to leverage on their expertise to adopt an online food ordering platform and to raise its online sales revenue and also to upskill its employees. Having benefited from this partnership with a solutions provider, Forward Coffee plans to adopt more digital solutions in other categories to qualify for the recently announced Digital Resilience Bonus, which will strengthen their business operations and their strategies. Now, besides solutions providers, our trade associations and chambers are also important allies. With their strong sectoral links, TACs can support your capability development efforts and introduce alternative sources of funding, such as through the SG Together Enhancing Enterprise Resilience Program or STEER. Uh, there's a matching grant given by government when the TACs set up uh, such resources to help their members. Uh, for example, Enterprise Singapore partnered with the Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Meituan Yanping for a promotional campaign in China titled Dine Singapore from the 15th of April to the 14th of May this year. This promotional campaign featured 12 famous Singapore food brands such as Mei Zhen Xiang, Bi Cheng Hyang, Imperial Treasure, Jumbo Group, and Paradise Dest Dynasty. And this increases their brand awareness and market presence amongst Chinese consumers. And through such partnerships, our companies can share resources and can benefit from the collective Singapore branding when they venture overseas. Rather than go on their own, I think there's, there are some synergies that we can reap when we do it together. And this brings me to my final point on helping businesses to tap on opportunities beyond Singapore. So like what the Chinese chambers have done together with Meituan Ping and Enterprise Singapore, we have to look beyond Singapore to look at gro new growth opportunities. Uh, let me share an example. So established in 2017, Biomine AI System is an award-winning deep tech company that builds predictive AI applications for the healthcare industry. So at the height of the COVID-19 outbreak uh, in Wuhan, which was the, the epicenter at that time, the company rapidly adapted its AI solution to develop a COVID-19 screening module based on chest CT scans. And they deployed their products across various cities in China, successfully establishing a foothold in this market. So of course, uh, there was an opening and an opportunity and the business owners saw that and they went in, seized the opportunity, they moved quickly. So that's what we want to, to do, to help our companies to be able to identify these opportunities in overseas markets and to help you to be able to assess these opportunities. We understand that internationalization is not easy, and which is why we are here to support you. The Grow Digital Initiative by IMDA, ESG, is one of the many programs to support you. This initiative aims to help our businesses to go global easily through e-commerce platforms without having to invest in a physical presence overseas immediately. You can of course choose to make an investment 
uh, and set up a physical presence later if you, if you want to do so. But having a digital uh, platform uh, will allow you to do so with lower cost of entry. More than 500 SMEs in Singapore have gained access to new overseas markets through digital platforms under this initiative. For example, Nanyang Optical, uh, this is also a very famous local uh, company. It, it focuses on uh, eyewear and it's a local chain that many of us are familiar with. Last month, the company decided to sign up for the multi-channel e-commerce platform under the Grow Digital Initiative to create an online presence locally to reach more customers during Circuit Breaker. So I'm pleased to share that the results have been very encouraging and Nanyang Optical is now planning to further expand its e-commerce business overseas, starting from Indonesia by adopting JD and Shopee's e-commerce platforms. And this is an example of how a company could turn crisis into opportunity. They had to deal with COVID circuit breaker and they went online, but having had that experience, they are now using that capability to help them to venture overseas. So there are many benefits to this uh, Grow Digital Initiative and I encourage all of you to find out more and to sign up for it. Ladies and gentlemen, the road ahead will be tough. The journey for enterprise transformation is not going to be easy. There will be companies that will succeed. There will be companies that initially will not succeed. But please don't give up. It is a journey that is worth embarking on. Because if you don't change to adapt to the new normal, you will not be able to survive. You will not be able to look for new revenue sources. You will not be able to look for new business opportunities. We understand that this journey is not easy and that's why the government is committed to support you and to work closely with you every step of the way. Thank you and I look forward to hearing from our panelists and to our panel discussion later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Minister. Uh, certainly your three Ds are very important to us, right? Digitalization, design and determination. And what I gather from there is that, you know, we should use technology to adapt to the new environment so that we can stay resilient and continue to compete. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, the next, uh, we have prepared a video for you. But before that, let me just share with you some uh, housekeeping rules. Uh, could you please flash the uh, housekeeping uh, uh, slide? Okay, while we're waiting for that, let me just uh, run through uh, two things. Um, first is that if you, this uh, session is recorded um, and then we will broadcast we won't broadcast it, we will actually uh, put it up into uh, the SG Tech uh, uh, YouTube channel so that uh, you can watch and, and listen to it again. Uh, second thing is that uh, there will be a live Q&A later. So what we require for you to do is to uh, put out your name, uh, tell, tell us which company you, you, you work for uh, and give us a questions. Uh, what we may do when we, co when we collect a lot of questions is that we, there may be some thematic question and we may just uh, answer uh, accordingly. Now, um, we need to like to run the Grow Digital, Go International video. Uh, so could you please uh, run the video? Thank you. Grow Digital aims to help SMEs grow their business overseas via digital channels and helps them access new customers and markets overseas. Grow Digital will introduce business to consumer B2C and business to business B2B platforms to help SMEs internationalize. So how do the business to consumer platforms work? The multi-channel e-commerce platform, MEP program, connects SMEs to solution providers. List and sell your products on multiple overseas e-marketplaces. Expand your digital sales channels. Access new customers. And test in-market demand for your products. There are also trainings provided to build SMEs' capabilities for cross-border e-commerce. 
for selected e-commerce platforms, SMEs can also list their offerings in a specially created Singapore Pavilion e-marketplace to target global buyers with products and services from Singapore. What about business-to-business -business platforms? By partnering with B2B platform providers, Grow Digital aims to create a seamless cross-border trade experience via access to an ecosystem of buyers, sellers, logistics service providers, credit financing, integrated e-payment solutions, and e-invoicing networks. AI-enable platform features to match SMEs to new sales and partnership opportunities in diverse markets from across Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, India, and worldwide. As well as assistance and training to create an online presence by the respective e-marketplaces that cater to chemicals, industrial hardware and machinery, office supply sectors, pharmaceuticals, processed foods, and more. So, how do you get on board? You can contact the respective platform providers or seek help from advisors in SME centers and the digital tech hub. Once a suitable platform has been identified, you will receive training and support from the platform to create an e-commerce presence for your products and services. With the platform's built-in features, you can now have easy access to overseas markets and start selling. It truly is time to grow digital and go international. Find out more today at www.imda.gov.sg slash grow digital. What an excellent uh, program, you know, from uh, Enterprise Singapore and IMDA. So to further talk about this program, uh, may I invite uh, Mr. Li Yi Fang, Director of ICM and uh, Digitalization Enterprise Singapore, to uh, uh, share with us some details. Uh, Mr. Li? Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yi Fang. What we would like to do in the next few minutes is to highlight the key features as well as our partners on the Grow Digital program. Uh, SNS Chi Jusan has already described the key whys and the need to go to digital channels. But at the same time, we do recognize that considerable resources that the company need to be in place to ensure that they are able to maximize their chances for a good success. And therefore, the, the tools, services, and network that our partners bring to this program is the crux of the uh, Grow Digital uh, pro effort. It's not just about the onboarding onto a platform, but the leveraging on our partners with their sector coverage, market reach, their expertise in operating online channels, as well as their in-market networks for fulfillment that we hope that we can bring a success to our participating uh, companies. And through these hands-on operations, as well as the bundled training that we have put in place, uh, we are hoping that the company can also develop uh, their internal competencies and processes to uh, ensure that they can take these um, this, uh, processes forward in a sustainable manner, which is likely to be the new normal going forward. So starting with the uh, B2B platforms, here what we see on the left are our respective B2B uh, partners, as well as the platform that they operate and provide services to. Uh, we have a mix of platforms to meet the different needs uh, of SMEs. There are those that are, that are dedicated to a certain product category, such as uh, industrial hardware, F&B products, as well as those, there are those that cover a broad range of sectors. Uh, for those that are uh, sector focused, we have Mr. Logan from Easy with us at the panel today, and uh, he'll be able to share some details uh, later on. And for those that are broad-based platforms, such as uh, Alibaba.com, our partner Innovative Hub, which is the service partner of uh, Alibaba, uh, actually has shared with us uh, some of the categories, such as F&B, chemical products, uh, automobile parts, as well as machinery parts, that our Singapore sellers uh, have actually found traction. Uh, still, still on the broad-based platforms, there's also the uh, uh, Asian SME hub that has been featured recently, and we are looking forward to that being operational in the coming month. 
uh, on the markets coverage front, we are focused on markets that are in Asia, especially Southeast Asia. And these are markets that our Singapore companies have expressed a lot of interest in as well. Moving on to uh, B2C marketplaces, we see that there are a range of uh, regional as well as the local e-commerce marketplaces that are actually relevant to our Singapore sellers. And, and therefore, this is how we have designed the program to, to assist our companies. So you see on the, on the left-hand column are the names of our partners. So Vikram, who is uh, from Sell in All, he's also on the panel today, right? These companies, they provide end-to-end -end services right, for you to operate on multiple e-commerce marketplaces concurrently. So these services include the inventory management across marketplaces, right? it could include cross-border fulfillment, as well as uh, digital marketing. Right? And bundled with uh, training from uh, SERS, we are hoping that the participating companies will be able to gain a good understanding of uh, e-commerce operations and to take this uh, forward sustainably. On the right-hand side, you can see the markets as well as the specific marketplaces that uh, we are active on. Uh, this list is of course uh, non-exhaustive. -ex and finally, uh, we have uh, Dodoka as a partner. Uh, this is in recognition that there is actually indeed a, a brand premium for Singapore branded products. Right? And therefore, this partnership with Dodoka is to create a Singapore pavilion or the WeChat platform so that we can better target these kind of customers. I'm on to my final slide, and this is on the uh, onboarding journey, right? So for, for companies who are interested to participate in this, the, the first step is probably to think about the, where is it that you want to play in? Is it in the B2B or is it in the B2C channels, right? And you can approach our SME centers or the digital tech hub for some consult if necessary. The step two is then actually approach one of uh, the, the, the partners to sign on for this. On the cost front, of course, there is a con funding by the government. Right? Between the platforms and the specific uh, services that are rendered, there is a range of prices. At the top, it is loaned more than uh, 7,000 per year after the uh, co-funding support. And actually, most of the solutions are at the two to 2.5 thousand uh, range per year. With the signing up, then the next step is actually to do the onboarding setup, which the partners will assist you with, and then to go for the associated trading. And then with that, uh, start selling. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I've come to the end. Uh, you will see the links that uh, uh, points you to the landing page where you can find more information on the Grow Digital. And now I will hand the time back to Andy. Hey, thank you, Yifang. Uh, that's uh, fantastic. You know, uh, glad to hear about the programs. Uh, right at the end of the session, we have QR code, you know, for you to uh, click on uh, so that you can find out uh, more. So now we move into the most interesting part of the session, uh, the panel discussion. Now, the COVID-19 turns out to be a tipping point for digitalization. We can see that companies that are connected continue to thrive in their business. Some even expand overseas because they are able to reach a much bigger audience. What we hear so far are the government's program together with the trade, together with solution partners to put together a very comprehensive facility for us to stay resilient in this economy. While it is tough, you know, we can grow. And the question is, what are the platforms that we can we ride on? What are the programs that we can uh, uh, leverage on? And how do we adapt and change ourselves as we go out to the market? So uh, who we have in, in the panel uh, today, uh, Minister Chi, uh, we have uh, 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 Chairman uh, Peter Ong from uh, Enterprise Singapore. Uh, and then we have three distinguished uh, panelist. First, we have uh, Mr. Vikram, founder and CEO of Sell in All. They are the multi channel e commerce experts on the B2C side. Next, we have uh, Mr. Logan Tan, uh, CEO and co founder of Easy's 
Private Limited. They are the Singapore largest B2B platform for industrial and business supplies. And last, we have Ms. Uh, Dorothy, uh, General Manager of Kiap Gyat Food Manufacturer. Uh, they have got 50 years of uh, history in producing staple noodles and tin sum skin uh, for us. Now, they have gone from automation to digitalization. And uh, we want to hear from her, right? How she embarked on this program and what are the, her future plans uh, uh, for the company. So for uh, a start, uh, I would um, ask uh, um, uh, Chairman um, Peter Ong to share with us, uh, you know, COVID-19 is the tipping point, as I've said, uh, and you know, it's probably the strongest and most unplanned impetus for SME uh, digitalization. So, uh, Chairman Ong, how has COVID-19 expedited this whole digital transformation? And in, in your view, you know, what is the uh, uh, progress right now? And how do you see it evolved? Well, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, and thank you very much, Minister, for taking time to come here to inspire and encourage SMEs to digitalize even more. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and I hope everyone can hear me and uh, there are no sound issues. Uh, let me, uh, I think the topic of SME digitalization is a broad one. Let me start by uh, making one very important point and that is that um, there is a great diversity of, uh, in our SME landscape. Our enterprises have very different corporate capacity, different uh, revenue size, different digital capacity, different stages of, of uh, uh, product maturity. And therefore, any uh, strategy that we adopt has to be progressive and also has to be manifold, multiple approaches. Um, so what we did in 2018, uh, we introduced the uh, Productivity Support Grant, PSG for short, uh, really to meet the productivity needs of SMEs through digital means. Uh, we, you should think of PSG basically as a uh, digital uh, supermarket where uh, SMEs can go and sort of pick off the shelf, pre-approve uh, solutions that they need. And uh, there's very little hand-holding that's needed to install or to use many of these solutions. And in fact, uh, in 2019, a year after uh, we launched PSG, we had 6,000 over uh, uh, enterprises that participate. This was about two and a half times more than in 2018 when we first started. Now, besides uh, PSG, we also launched Start Digital in January 2019. And really, this is for digital first-timers, those who have never uh, done anything uh, in the, on the digital front. And we selected five basic solutions that all first-timers would need, like HR, finance and accounting, digital transactions, digital marketing, and cybersecurity. And since January 2019, uh, close to about 25,000 SMEs have uh, signed on board on one form or another in some of these uh, in, um, solutions. And we work mainly through the banks and telcos because banks and telcos are the first point of contact for many of these uh, new SMEs that come on board. But we felt that it was not enough to only do uh, individual solutions for individual SMEs. We felt that the impact could be greater if we could include and embrace entire industries. And this is what we did in uh, one example um, that we, of an uh, industry partnership with the Singapore School and Private Higher Bus Owners Association. We worked out a cloud-based integrated fleet management system, which is really an app that both the drivers and parents uh, can use. Now, these uh, school bus and, and private hire buses are the buses that drive your kids uh, to school every day or even the uh, workers that, who work in remote places like say Tuas. 
So it's an app for the parents to know when their kids are boarding and alighting. So it adds a, a greater sense of security and, and productivity. And for the drivers, uh, whenever any one of them has to call in sick, there can always be a substitute driver and the route can be downloaded from the cloud so that uh, they know where to travel to pick up each one of these individual uh, school kids. And that's been uh, quite successful. But all this was pre-COVID. Then COVID came along. And COVID indeed has been the strongest unplanned impetus for SME digitalization. Something totally unplanned. We didn't, we, we didn't plan for it. <laughs> but so when COVID came with the onset of COVID, we felt we needed to help SMEs to do five things. Number one, how to work remotely. Number two, how to do virtual collaboration. Number three, how to do safe visitor management for those outlets and, 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 and premises that are still open. Number four, how to sell digitally. And of course, very important for Singaporeans, how to deliver food. So uh, we greatly enhanced our PSG with many solutions. And I'm happy to announce that since 1st of April, if you remember, we started Circuit Breaker on 7th of April. But since 1st of April, 5,000 SMEs have uh, signed on to some kind of PSG solutions associated with COVID. Let me give you two examples. Uh, well, these two examples actually predate uh, COVID, but they are very interesting examples. One is Buntongki, and the, the other one is TK Photo. Now, Buntongki, all of us know, we eat the famous chicken rice. Buntongki always had the PSG solution, but they were serving corporate customers. So when COVID came, they very quickly switched to serving retail customers like you and I. Last week, I checked their website. Uh, you can order your famous chicken rice, and uh, if you order more than $15, they will even waive the delivery charge using the solution uh, uh, that allows them to reach out to retail customers that you and I, uh, like you and I. Secondly, they went island-wide. So it was a big jump for Buntongki, but they were able to do that in very short time that was needed during uh, Circuit Breaker. TK Photo is another interesting one. They already again had the uh, PSG solution, but they were selling mainly camp, uh, photographic accessories. But when Circuit Breaker came, I guess all the uh, photography buffs decided they needed to buy a camera. And so TK Photo started to sell cameras uh, through the solution. And as a result, their COVID uh, uh, so, um, sales and transactions was up 30%. So uh, that's really been a good, a great help to companies like these two that I mentioned. Now, besides PSG, we also introduced new uh, first time, the e-commerce booster package, where we worked with four platforms, Amazon, Shopee, Q10, and Lazada, uh, and close to about 600 uh, retailers signed on. And what these platforms provide is an ability to sell both in Singapore and outside of Singapore, but full service or close to full service is provided, uh, fulfillment, uh, inventory management, digital marketing, and the like. So companies were able to jump onto the platform and continue to sell, even though their outlets were closed. Uh, for some, as I mentioned, uh, the revenue went up. Maybe perhaps for the majority, it was a way to mitigate uh, the shortfall of revenue because of the closure from Circuit Breaker. The other thing we had to do, as I mentioned, was food. Um, we worked with three platforms, Deliveroo, uh, Grab Food, and uh, Food Panda. Uh, I, I'm sure all of us would have ordered food during the circuit breaker uh, instead of going out to Tapau because we all couldn't dine out. And as a result of this program, close to 10,000 F&B outlets were able to put some, some 5,000 listings onto uh, mm -hmm. some kind of digital platform mm -hmm. in order that they could serve Singaporeans and feed us basically during the circuit breaker. I could go on, and uh, but it really brings us to where we are here today, which is Grow Digital. Now that economies are starting to reopen, I think we want to give the international dimension a greater push. And that's why we are having this launch of sorts uh, today of Grow Digital. I'm very heartened that uh, 900 over companies are here present with us. I'm quite sure 
uh, you represent the D, the two Ds that the uh, minister talked about, desire and determination uh, to want to take advantage of digitalization and continue to grow your business even under very difficult times. I guess I want to stop here because I want, to, I want the, the audience to be able to hear from uh, the rest of the panelists who have direct operational experience in many of the schemes that I have spoken about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman uh, Peter Ong. Uh, the examples you've given to us is, is so encouraging, you know, and, and, and certainly uh, the fact that we have a platform that companies can actually adapt. Right, so the case of Buntong Key from corporate uh, uh, customers, you know, they can switch over to consumers. Uh, if we don't have that platform, they can't uh, continue with their business. So that's uh, absolutely critical. And that brings us to the next topic, uh, which is you know, to find out what are the key elements, right, and capabilities for success on this e-commerce platform. And I would like to call upon uh, Vikram, uh, CEO and founder of uh, Sell in All. Uh, Vikram, question uh, to you would be this, right? For an SME new to e-commerce, it can be a daunting task to start selling virtually. Mm -hmm. So how does your solution cater to these SMEs? Question one. And the second question is this, you know, what are some of the required characteristics for the SMEs to achieve good results in this platform? So Vikram, go ahead. Thank you, Andy. To start anything new is always daunting. If you are a retailer, I'm sure it was daunting for you to first time open your shop. It would have been daunting for you to make your first purchase when you are a distributor. But in the end, we all did it. And the good thing is that now there are companies like ours who can handhold you for the entire journey of e-commerce. For the last five years, we have worked with many sellers in various stages of their e-commerce journey transformations. Either they have never started or just starting or they're already an expert in e-commerce. With our technology and team of e-commerce experts, we support you from choosing the right channels, making sure that your digital assets are placed in the right way so that you, give, you get maximum sales, handle your promotions, also take care of your campaigns plus example right when you get a sale in indonesia you are in singapore you get a sale in indonesia someone will come to your shop or your retail outlet or your warehouse pick up the item clear custom deliver it to the buyer in indonesia get the money in indonesian rupiah transfer it back to singapore so the end to end is being taken care of by companies like us we have partnered with many companies on the e-commerce journey, and we have seen it firsthand how e-commerce can scale, especially during the circuit breaker, right? Uh, companies like Walking Tall, h 2 Hub, Blum & Co, Nanyang Optical, which Minister C quoted, Avenue Kids, Gifts Greeting, Song Fi, MTN Skimter, their main source of sales became only e-commerce. When offline businesses were forced to shut, e-commerce came as the only saving grace for many, many businesses. And now with the support of uh, support from Singapore government towards digital transformation, there is no better time to jump in, jump on this bandwagon and take your businesses to the next level. I would thank Enterprise Singapore and IMDA because, because of them now, local businesses can drive can dive into e-commerce with lower risk through multi-channel providers like us. And uh, Andy, for your second question regarding what are the uh, key things that an e-commerce brand or a seller needs to adopt to get good result? Okay. Uh, to answer this question, let me answer it as a buyer. Okay. Uh, during these three months. I have not traveled to other countries. I have been sitting in home. So the good thing in COVID is I spend a lot of time with my daughter, my 10 year old daughter. And we wanted to buy a game, a board game, a physical board game to play. So we went online as a buyer, I'm a customer. We went online to buy a game. 
the game name is ketan so we search for the ketan me and my daughter search for the game ketan and when we searched we found 15 of the sellers selling the same game so how the selection process works you can understand the first thing is uh product the first thing is the product we look at all the photos out of all the photos some were not good the angle of the photos were not good so we filtered it off that is the first p this is p c minister c talked about d i am talking about p there are four p's in e-commerce number 1 is product the product photo should be good so we filter in in when i was purchasing we filtered out then we came to around 10 uh, 10 of the products so all were displayed then the second thing was p second p is price so we checked the price some were very 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 low price and some were very very expensive the low price one obviously we thought it could be a duplicate one so we rejected the high price one of course i am also an sme i cannot offer so we rejected so we we narrowed down to close to around 5 uh, or 6 and then next up we went in we went into the products and saw the buyer ratings some had very bad buyer ratings so that was also rejected then at last we narrowed down to 3 three. three of the three of the products we checked if there were any promotions unfortunately we did not have any promotions but we wanted to buy it the promotion is the next third p i'll explain how the promotion comes in bit later so there were three products three different prices my daughter also was sitting next to me and then she was also looking at it there was one product which was slightly high priced but it had a image of people actually playing the game so she told we will buy this we will buy this i told this is all the three are looks the same all the three reaches us in the same time all the three had good buy ring why do you want to choose this she said there are people who are playing i like that so we ended up purchasing that the item came to us there kicked in the next p the promotions the promotions is when they send me the product they also send me a gift coupon where i can use it for the for my next promotion for my next purchase so 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 you know what happened we purchased the second version of the cat and cat and see fares for the second version we used the promotion and i also spread the promotion to all our colleagues in our office we ended up buying five games from the same seller so this is how actually e-commerce works you need to have the fourth piece good product good price good promotion and also it should be on the right place if all the four are there definitely we will get sales thank you thank you vikram thank you andy now we got four d's and uh, five p's so uh maybe i can ask the uh, minister uh, minister minister chi you know uh maybe you've got some co- uh, there are some comments on from what you've heard so far Oh, thank you, Andy. I I'll just comment quickly because I think we want to hear from the other two uh, private sector panelists as well. Um, I think I agree with Vikram uh, that the trust is very important. So in an environment uh, where you don't see the seller, um, you actually will go for uh, entities that can be trusted. And so that's why uh, not too long ago, Enterprise Singapore launched a set of standards for e-commerce. The whole purpose is to try and see how we can reinforce this element of trust uh, and give greater assurance to buyers and also then help to give our companies our sellers our SMEs a uh, more competitive platform compared to sellers from other countries because I think that's one thing which uh, we have an advantage in Singapore our trusted branding uh, so I I think this is something on the, in in the digital realm uh, high tech also requires high trust Thank you. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, Minister, you know, trust is a huge element in in platform, right? Because you got security, cyber security, uh, even uh, 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 the advertisement and and promotion. You know, all those have got to come true, right? And more so in supply and supply chain. Uh, and hence, I I like to ask uh, Logan, Logan from uh, Easy's. Uh, Logan, I I will combine two questions for you. um uh, one is really on on uh, uh the uh, platform and the other the other one is also on your uh, opportunities right so the question uh, for you is that um 
the COVID-19 situation has really highlighted the diversity uh, and also the transparency of supply chain. Uh, question is, how do companies stay resilient uh, in this disruption? And the second one is that, you know, as they go across border in the B2B channels, you know, what are the challenges that they, they might face and, and how do they overcome? Yeah, thanks Andy uh, for the question. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Logan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Easy. So in the since uh, the pandemic has hit uh, Singapore, right, we have actually seen a lot of business buyers or the larger enterprise um, that increasingly focus on supply chain resilience. And due to the, 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 the matter of fact that um, COVID-19 has hit the supply chain really hard uh, due to the multiple countries shutting down. And they, they require more of the need to reach out to more vendors uh, via a fast and you know, efficient way. And how they do that is that if eventually they turn to us uh, via a digital platform, uh, well-known in the P2P space, uh, to be able to connect to more vendors uh, in an efficient way. Right? Um, so we have seen that it's ever more important for SMEs to sort of future-proof themselves um, in this situation. And um, what happened, like if you want to onboard to our P2P platform, we also understand that a lot of uh, SME owners are first time uh, digitalizing or uh, have tried digitalizing and require more help, right? Uh, what can we do beyond, um, you know, just hosting these webinars is that um, two things that I want uh, the SME owners to take away today is that one is that by leveraging on platforms like um, all the partners that we have, on board, uh, whether be it sell in all or whether it be easy or whether it be your directly with Lazada, Q10, etc., is that every one of these individual platforms have a ready pool of ready buyers, and just depends on um, what is your company strategy. Uh, who are you targeting? If you are targeting businesses, you can choose a platform like ours, where we have a ready pool of uh, enterprises. They are there uh, browsing for products, right? And when the COVID nineteen hits, what we have seen and receive feedback from the ground is that, um, you know, salespeople can't visit um, it, uh, enterprises for, to push physical, physical, physical catalogs anymore. So what happened is that um, all these enterprises are using digital portal like ours to browse for catalogs of individual suppliers and to make ready purchases through the e-commerce experience. So that's one. And then secondly, um, how can we help you to onboard, right? Um, so we understand the difficulty of um, SMEs trying to onboard a digital platform if you are first time doing it. And we have designated account managers to sort of guide you to onboard our platform in less than um, five minutes. And our platform is really designed to help uh, SME owners who are not so technologically savvy. It's a simple interface um, with minimal information required. Um, and so uh, with the assistance of our account managers, that could really help to ease the process a lot into uh, onboarding on our platform. And uh, hopefully to see more of the SME owners that we can help um, to help you through this pandemic and future-proof yourself. Yeah, Andy. Hey, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Logan. You know, uh, this um, certainly helped us to understand better how, you know, we can set ourselves up and uh, uh, also set ourselves to, to go international. Uh, and with that, uh, I'd like to uh, turn the, uh, our attention to Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy, you know, Kiap Gap has just signed up on Grow Digital early this year. Uh, so certainly, <laughs> COVID right, sort of like push you, right? There's this impetus and, and there's this uh, uh, tipping point for you. Uh, so could you share with us, uh, uh, you know, what really got you to finally decided to go from automation to digitalization? And what was the experience like and uh, what are your plans for the future? Dorothy, uh, Mike. I'm mute, thank you. Hi. Yeah, Gap Food is a Singapore SME. We have been manufacturing in Singapore for more than 50 years. We supply noodle products to a wide spectrum of customers across the island. Corporate customers with more than 20 outlets, as well as single store hawkers. While servicing our corporate customers, we have had 
experience using B2B platform to handle their orders for more than seven years. However, for the smaller business customers, the sales ordering process remained pretty manual till quite recently. With the support of the government's Grow Digital Initiative, the company has come on board a B2B platform that can, handle, that can be handled easily by the small business hawkers to place order with us. Our customer can use their handphone to order goods at their own time, even late at night for delivery the next day. You see, digital system need not sleep. With this COVID situation, the government has allocated a lot of resources to lift up our hawkers' digitalization capability. This crisis has in fact helped our company implementation of the project since the climate of keep it up or lose out has given our hawker customers the motivation to adopt new technology and grow together with us. During Circuit Breaker, Many of our customers' sales revenue dropped drastically. Both restaurants and hawker businesses suffer badly. And as their supplier, we bleed together with them. So in order to cope with the crisis, these are the two initiatives that my team has done. To counter the drastic drop in food services sales, we shift our focus to the many consumers that are stuck at home. From the previous big bulk packet of 40 pieces of noodles, we reconfigure our packaging machine to pack noodles into smaller packets of eight pieces. We arrange our humble noodles in Instagrammable settings to take nice photos and keep posting them in Facebook, offering free delivery promotion and directly engaging with home buyers. While we learn to be active on social media, there are many heartwarming stories surfaced despite the gloom. Many young gen helping their parents or relatives to advertise on social media. The young champions in our team also step up with the momentum. They contacted the hawker uncles and aunties and offered their help to advertise for them the food on Hawkers United Facebook page. They help them to take photos of their store, their menus, copyright on how to order goods from them and post it up for them. With this effort, we hope to drum up their sales and keep their business alive. I am very proud of our awesome young team members. Moving forward, it is my wish that many Singapore SME can come on board to join this digital ecosystem to collaborate and grow our business together, be it locally or internationally. Andy? Hey, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Dorothy. Um, you know, it's so heartening to see uh, how you move this uh, local enterprise. Um, and adapt, you know, and change and, and go on to digitalization. And that now allows you to address a much bigger market. Uh, and then, you know, who knows, uh, one day maybe somebody in Finland might be able to buy your dim sum skin and make their own uh, wonton and all that uh, as well. Uh, and also, I think uh, uh, um, uh, you may have even some programs, right? Um, in, in Melbourne, as, as you shared with us. Could you share more with us, uh, uh, the, the plans you have in Melbourne? Also show us a bit of the packages that you have. Yep. Um, with our experience thus far, we see the B2B platform as the way business connection can be forged. And it allows expansion through having a virtual presence. The f and mark market global from Bisman is such a system that can efficiently and effectively handle our transactions. And this applies to our overseas customer as well. Uh, Yap Yap has been uh, manufacturing noodle products catering to the B2B food service business in the past. For overseas market, we tried to break into the B2B market. However, 
with the additional cross-border logistic costs, it is quite challenging to offer competitive price. We need to have a differentiation and to tap on the Singapore brand, which our government has over the years marketed it well into a premium brand. Our marketing team has developed a ready meal kit, incorporating Singapore favorite flavors, for example, chili crab and laksa soup. We packed it with our well-loved ramen noodles. In fact, Senior Minister Chi has tried this meal kit during an ESG organized food truck event in Japan, which we participated last October. I hope he enjoyed our noodles. Okay, he's got a thumbs up. <laughs> so Dorothy, now you got to send it to us. We got to be your <laughs> tester. But very encouraging, fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, it, and it shows innovation. Uh, and again, without the platform, this cannot be done. It can change the market. Uh, and it, it also now, as we, as we go international, uh, we have to worry about competition, yeah? Uh, and hence, I want to ask uh, Vikram this question. You know, you set up all this B2C platform, help people to go to the market, to go uh, 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 international, go Thailand and, 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 and uh, what have you. The question is this, right? Um, how do SMEs stay competitive? When now we've got new competitors in, in the other market, how do we differentiate ourselves? Vikram. Thanks, Andy. Do you guys know why Coca-Cola was so successful? Two main things, marketing and availability. Available everywhere the customer shops. With e-commerce, now you can make your products available and sell everywhere where the customer shops without spending the millions of dollars which they spent. You can actually sell in all parts of the world. With this exposure, yes, there will be more competition. But we have to also remember that we are reaching million more customers. On top of the four piece, which I mentioned previously, right? Understanding local market is very, very, very important. Localization is essential for adopting the content to the local market. And support also should be in local language. This is where our regional team comes in very, very, very handy. Let me tell you another example of one of our customers. Three years ago, when we started this out in Malaysia, there was a customer, I mean, we, we still have him with us. So he wanted to sell in Malaysia. So we took the items put it in the Malaysia marketplaces. We did all the translation, we did all the customization, we put the right price, and for one week, we did not have any sales. We were a bit taken back. So what we did was, okay, so we went on and then we corrected certain things. We also reduced the price point. We reduced such that it will be lower than the cheapest competitor. Still there was no, still there was no change, nothing happened. Then a person from our, our Malaysia team came in and said, Vikram, why don't we put a stamp called as original, O-R-I-G-I-N-A-L, on the photo? We did that. Guess what? Next day, we got, the, we got our first sale. And then on, the sale continued. And then now, he is selling in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and US as well. He is getting sales from all these marketplaces in different, different countries. So the lesson we learned here is, just listing alone does not guarantee sales. We need to understand the market, localize and cater to its unique characteristics and behaviors for the buyers in each region. Next, the support. When we sell to people in Indonesia, right, you need to have support in local language. The predominant question which Indonesian marketplace, I mean, the customers in Indonesian marketplace ask this, even though the items are well displayed on Lazada, Shopee, whatever it is, they will ask, do you have stocks in Bahasa? You just need to answer, yes, I have stocks. And then people will buy. This was a strange behavior which we found in Indonesia. So, so, so basically, local, localization and local support are essential. 
localization i would say is the key to successfully sell in multiple marketplaces around the region to go global act local our vision is to make local entrepreneurs become instant global entrepreneurs now with the existence of companies like ours that provides technology connecting various e-commerce platforms with local experts placed in these countries who understands the market speaks the language the infrastructure to receive the funds from all these markets into one point and send the goods from point a to point b it's never easier to get started because everything is encompassed into one box it's time to embark on your e-commerce journey and grow your business beyond borders. Thank you, Vikram. You know, you, you make a very good marketer. Now we know why you, you sell it all. You can sell everything to any, anyone. <laughs> I would just Thank add you. that if you hmm. put the stamp made in Singapore, that is quality assurance. Yeah. No, it works. Okay. So Andy, really, really it works. Andy, when uh. we say that <laughs> from Singapore, they, they, we have sellers, right? Selling in Indonesia. Yeah. We say from Singapore, there is a brand value. Really, really, that's a brand will. It works. So I got and a question I would for say, the senior minister. Do you yeah, agree with a statement like this? Like <laughs> and uh, press you, you. Uh, uh, no, you've seen it practically. Like yeah. What you've heard. Yeah, minister. Thank you, Andy. Definitely, I think uh, Vikram made a good point about the Singapore brand having that premium. And indeed, uh, like what Dorothy shared, uh, when I tried the noodles, it was in Tokyo. And in fact, one, that, that was the night before the major typhoon, Typhoon Hagibis, hit Tokyo. Uh, ESG organized a uh, food fair, uh, bringing some of our local food companies uh, and five food trucks to let the Japanese consumers try our local food products. Because, you know, sometimes they're not familiar, so they have to try it first. And then after that, we can follow up with uh, more sales, whether from Singapore through e-commerce or we partner some of the local retailers and then we can sell some of our products through their stores. So that, that um, I mean, the, the typhoon was an unfortunate and unexpected event, um, but despite the, the not so uh, conducive weather, uh, the, I still met quite a number of Japanese uh, who were, you know, it, was, it started to rain, although the typhoon hasn't quite hit. And they were still out there trying out the food. And so I talked to them, I asked them, and they really enjoyed it. So I think, it gave us some confidence that you know we can. The Japanese market is particularly difficult to to penetrate uh, because they have very uh, high standards uh, when it comes to quality, when it comes to uh, taste. Uh, so I think it is it is an achievement that our local food companies were able to uh, break into this market and to win the confidence and the support from the Japanese consumers. Um, one point that Vikram made about localization is absolutely correct. So I met this uh, one of the food trucks. Huh? They were selling satay, Jumain satisfaction. Uh, and they had to tone down the spiciness of the satay sauce because the Japanese consumers couldn't quite take the same level of spice as our local consumers. Uh, but they then made the sauce a bit creamier to suit the local taste. So I think some amount of customization, localization is absolutely critical. We can't just take the same product and expect it to sell, we have to, to adjust it to meet the local taste. If I may, uh, maybe just also share another example to, to reinforce what Dorothy mentioned earlier about the need to uh, innovate business models. Now, there's this young startup uh, started by two young Singaporeans, Alan and Berlin, and they started this company called Alchemy Food Tech. So it is a plant-based fiber that extract from plants to then turn into uh, 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 in, an ingredient that can be made into uh, uh, bread, noodles, pao, pizza. And they even designed it such that it, it looked like grains of rice and then you can cook it like rice. And the, the beautiful thing about this is that it tastes very much like the original flour or the rice, uh, but the glycemic index of this product is much lower. So it is almost like you're having a normal bread, uh, but with a much lower glycemic index and therefore better for people with diabetes or people who are concerned about diabetes. So this company during COVID uh, couldn't quite uh, sell B2B, like what Dorothy mentioned. So they switched as well to cater to 
home bakers because there was a surge in demand, right? For people who stay at home and they wanted to do baking. So they started to customize their products and then, you know, use a different method, different packaging, different sales channel. So I think all these stories tell us one thing, which is that our companies are adaptable. They are nimble. And when they are faced with challenges and obstacles, they will know how to find ways around it. And I think this is a, a very important uh, asset that, that we have to preserve, uh, how, especially when we go overseas. Because, you know, make no mistake, huh, the competition out there is fierce. Uh, here, we, if within Singapore, we have a lot of competition. But when you go out there, you are faced with even more competition. And when you go to a big market, whether it's Shanghai or Shenzhen, Jakarta, uh, there will be many competitors. So how do you differentiate yourself? I think that's really a very important uh, consideration for many of us. If you're just going to offer something similar, uh, nothing special, then like my rock sugar example earlier, it becomes a commodity. And we are, you are competing as a commodity, then it's about who offers the cheapest price. So if you don't want to be in that sound scenario, then you really got to ensure that whether it's your product or your service or your overall brand and packaging, uh, there must be something that differentiates you from your competitors. And what we are hoping to do through these various schemes that we have, whether it's PSG that Mr. Ong mentioned, or whether it's the uh, SME Go Digital, or many of these schemes that Enterprise Singapore has put in place to help companies go overseas, actually that it comes back down to one single focus. How do we help companies to build stronger capabilities, to have innovation, to have better quality products, so that you are better able to differentiate what you have vis-a-vis -vis your competitors? Thank you. Hey, thanks, uh, Minister. Certainly, uh, very, very true. Right? You know, we we just got to stay very competitive, uh, and we're very glad that the government is supporting us with a lot of programs. Uh, I just want to turn to uh, Chairman uh, Peter for a, a, a final question and which is, you know, in this, uh, um, uh, why is it uh, that this digitalization so much more relevant to the SMEs right now? And, and why is it that, you know, we, we put up so many programs, so many grants, so many incentives for them to, to uh, 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 participate? Uh, Chairman Peter? Uh, thank you, Andy. Um, over the last few months, when all of us were in Circuit Breaker, I was doing a lot of reading. I read a lot of articles about COVID, obviously. And one phrase that kept coming up that puzzled, that, that you know, at first I resonated a lot with me was this term called post-COVID. Because everybody was looking forward to after COVID. And as I continue to think about this, I realized, uh, actually, I don't know what this term post-COVID means. Because when you see uh, the experience of places like Beijing, New Zealand, in some sense, New Zealand is the poster boy of, of how to cope with COVID. Or even the Australian state of Victoria, after they managed to deal with the infection numbers and for days, infection was zero, cases came back again. So the recovery path for all of us, including those who have very good policies, will not be a linear one. You may go through days where you have no infections and you think you are totally clean. And then when we reopen, things can happen again, as the examples I've mentioned. So what does this mean? So in a sense, there isn't a clear post-COVID era. We're just operating in a COVID world with a lot of uncertainties about the future. So what does this mean for SMEs? It means that not only do you suffer demand deficit because um, COVID means people are spending less and people have lost their jobs. Uh, the IMF predicts that uh, G20 unemployment will go all the way up to 8% this year. Uh, in Singapore, our retail sales have slumped in April by close to 40% compared to a year ago. So not only are we going to experience this demand deficit, we also was experience supply chain disruption. And in ways and in markets that we cannot predict, it can happen here today and tomorrow is another place and another place. 
So you always, as an SME, as an enterprise, you have to keep adjusting, innovating. And that's where I want to say that something like Grow Digital, where you're provided full services, including localized services, where you can participate not just in one market, but multiple markets, can really be a big advantage, especially in a world where you can't travel and you have to do everything remotely and safely. Let me give you the example of uh, this company, uh, Seo Inju. And I picked this company because I think one of the questions in the Q&A panel asked about frozen food. So Seo Inju is, uh, is, is in the business of frozen food for the last 60 years. In fact, they started as a butcher store in Orchard Road. In those days when Orchard Road had a uh, market. And, but they've slowly, uh, steadily grown to be a wholesale trading uh, leader here in Singapore. We've ready to cook food for supermarkets, hotels, and, 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 and airlines and restaurants. And what they want to do with Grow Digital is to conquer three markets, Maldives, Thailand, and Philippines. Because I guess in part, they know that the COVID world is going to be a very uncertain world. And so they want to be able to take advantage of all the benefits of the local services, the cross-border services that Grow Digital offers, but also the multiplicity of markets. Because in this COVID world, we never know when your market will suffer from disruption, both on the demand and supply side. Now, beyond Grow Digital, I know we're here to talk about Grow Digital, as I sit in, in, in Enterprise Singapore, I'm seeing a whole new world of doing business come upon us. Right now, as we speak, the Canton Fair in China is happening. Now, this is the largest and the oldest fair in China. I think last year, before COVID, they had about 200,000 foreign delegates. I don't want to talk about local delegates, which will be even more. They had some 20 over 1,000 pavilions. This year, Canton Fair is totally virtual. And the key thing is cloud and conferencing technology, which Tencent is providing, where you can do matchmaking, presentations, negotiations, contracting, all virtually with people from all around the world. I did a Google search just now. Brazilians are interested in Canton Fair. Why? Because they don't have to travel all the way to Guangzhou to, to participate. They can now do so virtually. Live streaming is the rage. Last week, there's this uh, Liu Tian Ipa uh, shopping festival in China. Enterprise Singapore helped nine of our brands in Singapore to do live streaming. And this, uh, for many of them, it was the first time doing live streaming of their products. So we sort of set up a small booth of sorts where a few people can go in there and do the live streaming. Uh, and it's 24-7, uh, as Dorothy talked about. Selling doesn't have to be during office hours with live streaming and with uh, uh, virtual uh, collaborative tools, everything can be 24-7. So, and three weeks ago, I launched an open innovation, a virtual open innovation uh, platform with Jetro from Japan. Jetro brings the corporates from Japan, the big corporates, the big Japanese companies with problem statements. And our job here in Singapore was to provide them with startups and SMEs who could provide solutions. And right now, as we speak in um, companies are matching each other solutions to problem statements so that they can help the Japanese companies innovate virtually. Like what the minister talked about just now about the need to innovate business model, products and services. The minister also mentioned Alchemy Food Tech. Alchemy Food Tech two years ago won our Slingshot competition, which is usually held at the end of the year. This year for Slingshot, it will all be virtual. So competition is going to be done virtually of startups. And in the run-up to uh, Slingshot, we're going to have several deal Fridays where we bring venture capitalists, uh, startups and, and the like to come and talk deals and see who is interested in uh, providing financing to reach deals. We've done four deals, deal Fridays this year, all virtual. We'll continue to do so. I'm giving you all these examples just to show that Beyond Grow Digital, which I think can really help SMEs do many of the things that you need to do in an uncertain COVID world, there are many other tools, many other solutions, many other platforms that we would very much want to encourage our SMEs 
to experiment and try out. And Enterprise Singapore and the rest of our government counterparts, uh, colleagues, would very much want to support you in this work as you embark on this brave new world of doing business in a COVID world. I believe that um, in a time of great uncertainty, there is reason to still be optimistic because the enablers and the tools are there. And the impetus is truly there. And from the many examples I've cited today, those who have jumped on board after an initial period of getting used to new tools, new corporate and digital muscles which they have to develop, they have seen the results speak for themselves. So I want to issue this uh, welcome to SMEs who want to partner with us at Enterprise Singapore. Get in touch with us. We'll be very happy to support you in this very exciting journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairman Peter. That's very encouraging. Uh, we've, uh, oh, we're almost reaching 4.30. Uh, may I just request everyone's time, maybe just to ex uh, extend for about five minutes. Uh, we, we have uh, two questions uh, in Q&A and, uh, and then a uh, um, uh, conclusion uh, a remark from uh, uh, Minister Chi. So uh, here's a question number one. Uh, this question is from uh, Siva Kola, um, and his question is this, right? This is Siva from uh, SPE Cisnet. Uh, we are looking at setting up our office in Thailand, Bangkok, but found it uh, that and found that it has many compliance requirements. Uh, can you please help us uh, to uh, uh, on how to set up uh, the company in Bangkok? I think maybe Logan can help us with this question on uh, cross-border setup. Yeah, um, thanks for asking the question, Mr. Siva and uh, Andy. Um, so like what we have found out with our, our local SMEs uh, these days is that, uh, like Mr. Siva here, right, when expanding overseas, there's a lot of legal complications and uh, compliance in place uh, in every different countries. And of course, uh, ESG have like offices in every single country to help you. Uh, and you can uh, actually make use of those uh, initiatives by Enterprise Singapore to go overseas. But that you still requires a very tedious and you know sometimes tiring process just for you to expand overseas. And what we have done is that um, actually by utilizing platform like ours, uh, easy and probably like sell and all, you'll actually get um, instant access by uh, onboarding our platform to sell in different markets. Uh, and what it does is that digital uh, technologies is good um, in, in a way that like you want it fast, you can uh, use a platform to test it out first, test the demand in every single country, whether you have a uh, you know, like tweak your certain products, like what um, uh, Chairman Mr. Peter have shared, uh, tweak your products um, to sort of suit the market. Um, and then through the platform, you can really see the demand uh, within the market itself. Once you have certain demand without going through all those complications, you can actually, um, you know, still utilize the ESG uh, overseas initiatives and grants to still uh, go overseas. So that's the, the what I would suggest uh, Mr. Siva here to do. Uh, one is to onboard digital initiatives uh, and using that to have instant access. Second, if the result proves to be good, like in certain markets, it, there's tend to be like more demand of your products, you can actually head to uh, Enterprise Singapore or Digital Tech Hub uh, just to request for assistance uh, with all this legal uh, incorporation overseas. And that is like the step-by-step -step process. Okay. Thanks, uh, Logan. Uh, that's a good uh, tip. Andy, can I uh, supplement that answer? Yes, yes, uh, Chairman. Yep, uh, very ahead. quickly, I think uh, Logan has given a very good answer. I just want to make the two points. We, at Enterprise Singapore, we have an office in Bangkok, so you feel free to uh, get in touch with us. But we have also specially worked with the Singapore Business Federation on this thing called the Global Connect. So there's a capability center, uh, connection center in uh, Singapore Business Federation, which, and they are establishing what we call in-market partners that will help uh, companies from Singapore to navigate all the regulations, FTA uh, compliance requirements, so that you can have a smooth landing in uh, the markets around the region. So SBF Global Connect is the other, is the um, entity that we've been working with SBF uh, to be a one point, one, one stop center to help companies with questions like this. Thank you. 
Okay, I think the next question is also for Chairman uh, Peter. Uh, and this question is from uh, Melvin Tan Eng Hui from uh, CST New Retail uh, Private Limited. They are an e-commerce solution uh, provider uh, and they spent many uh, years in, in China. So uh, his question is that, you know, how can they uh, participate and become a, an e-commerce uh, uh, vendor and certified uh, under your, your program? Uh, so, you know, how do they sign up? Uh, Chairman Peter? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, thank you for the question. A very good question. Uh, since uh, we have launched, uh, several companies have approached us. Um, and by the way, this is, uh, we are working very closely with IMDA, uh, who, are our very, uh, who, who actually run this program and Enterprise Singapore works alongside. So come and approach IMDA and ourselves uh, to uh, tell us what you do. And we will definitely be very happy to see how we can fit you in if there is a fit um, and, and, and to point you in the right direction. Uh, if not, in, I assume your question pertains to Grow Digital. If not, uh, you have other solutions like I mentioned just now. There are many other digital uh, uh, muscles, I said, um, that uh, SMEs will need. And if you can help them in one form or another, we'll be happy to uh, see how you can be a partner. And we'll be happy together with IMDA, uh, make referrals uh, for you to meet companies that will be in need of your services. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now I would uh, uh, hand it over to uh, Minister Chi for your uh, closing remarks. But before he says anything, I just want to remind everyone to give us your webinar feedback and survey, which we'll flag out later. And also some up and coming uh, programs, please join us for uh, other webinars as well. So, uh, uh, Minister Chi. Thank you, Wendy. Let me, let me first uh, thank Mr. Ong and our panelists for their sharing. Uh, I've certainly learned a lot from uh, what, they have, what they have shared. And I also want to thank uh, our many participants uh, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, there are some questions that I think, due to the time constraints, we won't be able to answer every single one. Uh, but we will take note and we will follow up with you separately to contact you and to have a deeper and further discussion with you to see how we can help you and what are some of the schemes that we have in place that can benefit you uh, on this transformation journey. So earlier uh, in my opening remarks, I spoke about the three Ds of enterprise transformation, digitalization, design, you know, combined with technology, and lastly, the importance of having determination so that if you encounter any initial setbacks, don't give up. There are actually also three ups that we have been focusing on as well. And these are level up, scale up, and team up. So under level up, we hope that we can use technology, we can use design thinking to help our companies to build stronger capabilities, to come up with innovative products and services to become more competitive. Under scale up, we want to help our companies to grow, including growing overseas, because the market in Singapore, you know, we are a small economy. Um, we are in the, in the middle of a growing region with a rising middle class. And Asia still has a lot of potential. Southeast Asia, Asia still has a lot of potential for growth. And it is important for us to help our companies to be able to plug into these growth markets so that they can scale up their operations and benefit from the growth in our region, and our companies can then grow in tandem. And thirdly, team up. I think we all know you, know, you can't do everything by yourself. So even on this uh, program that we have uh, to help companies to adopt digital solutions, we have our solutions providers, we have our TACs, and even collaborations between SMEs coming together. That's also something that we're trying to encourage. So level up, scale up, and team up. We hope that we can use these different approaches to help more Singapore SMEs to build stronger muscles, deeper capabilities, so that they are able to not just do well in Singapore, but to take the Singapore brand name and go overseas. Lastly, you know, there's a, there's a uh, concern that some people have sometimes that uh, you know, is technology the answer to everything? And is it a silver bullet? And is everything about technology? The answer is no. We are not saying that technology is the only solution. Technology is a tool, is a very important enabler, but 
technology cannot be used in isolation and by itself. You have to first know what is it that you are trying to do to meet the needs of your customer. What does your customer require? What kind of competitive advantage do you want to offer? Then you think about what technology can help you to achieve that outcome. But there is also an important point about technology that while technology isn't everything, without technology, there are many things you can't do. You know, in Chinese, I think it sounds better in Chinese. 科技不是万能,但不懂得用科技就万万不能. If you don't know how to use technology, there are many, many things you can't do. So I'll just end with that because I hope what we have uh, shared with our participants, our companies this afternoon, uh, will encourage more of you to come on board this digitalization journey, this enterprise transformation journey. And if you would like to find out more, please contact Enterprise Singapore, please contact IMDA. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Minister uh, Chi, uh, Chairman Peter Ong, uh, Vikram, uh, Logan, and Dorothy, and also uh, Yifang for sharing with us. I think uh, most importantly is thank you for your time. If you have any questions, uh, you can actually find out more in, uh, uh, in this website, uh, IMDA, Go Digital. Uh, please uh, uh, click on that. Uh, the next slide, please is our up and coming webinars. So I hope you enjoy yourself and there are other seminars that SG Tech uh, has uh, prepared for you. Please come and join us on the re-engineering of the government OS. We've got part two and part three, uh, but another very exciting one is really on smart nation. You know, uh, how do we partner with industry and uh, how do we uh, uh, really uh, help grow in this economy? Uh, once again, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, certainly I have. I've learned a lot. I've heard a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, please don't forget to uh, give us your feedback on the post-webinar survey. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay vigilant. Thank you very much, everyone.